thank you Vasco for the opportunity to 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 have this fellowship with professionals on uh, the on on the very appealing subject uh, so I'm going to talk uh, on the uh, on how to open an account for an offshore company uh, and I'm going to consider this subject matter from the standpoint of a lawyer a person that can provide you with this information um, uh, I do not represent any bank I will just be happy to share my experience with you given the fact that the, in the in, lately uh, companies that uh, have been registered and are put, owned by Ukrainian, Russian or post-Soviet beneficiaries are discriminated against There uh, sometimes uh, reasons include non-compliance and some unclear criteria, and uh, and based on these unclear uh, criteria, we are refused. So we decided to think about the possibility of opening up opening up accounts for non-resident uh, non-residents. Uh, in Ukraine. The Ukrainian legislation provides quite favorable conditions for that. Initially, they were established in February uh, 19, uh, in, in February 2019. Uh, the, the procedure was clearly defined to allow for the residents, tax residents, regardless of where they are registered, can open up uh, an account with Ukrainian banks. The procedure is split into two phases. Phase number one, uh, one has to necessarily uh, be registered with the tax authority. And the second phase has to do with the, with the opening of a bank account. So we're talking about these two stages and uh, uh, and the uh, legal entity can open up an account with the, with the Ukrainian banks. So there's a list of questions to answer. Question number one, how does a legal entity or physical person uh, get registered with the Ukrainian tax authority and how to terminate uh, the tax authority registration according to the legislation. The second question is how much time uh, is this procedure going to take? As we know that should we talk about opening up an account uh, with a foreign bank by a non-resident uh, in offshore countries or countries that are on a blacklist can last almost forever. Do we have a specific period of time in Ukraine? Question number three. Uh, does Ukraine and Ukrainian banks provide any privileges or additional opportunities? Uh, that is, to what extent can Ukrainian banks be competitive when compared to the Montenegrin, Hungarian, or Polish, uh, or Andorran banks? To me, this question is very professional, and uh, I constantly analyze it, and I can infer that in some cases I would prefer If I was not a Ukrainian tax resident, I would prefer to open up uh, a bank account in Ukraine because Ukraine has joined the automatic system of exchanging uh, banking information, but it has not um, adopted the appropriate legislation to, to make sure this procedure is working. So you. You, so, so this information is not provided to the tax 
but is um, of 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 those uh, tax residents trying to open up a bank account in Ukraine. Also, Ukraine has not joined the SEP, SEP system, but the SWIFT system is operating quite uh, 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 quite effectively. The next question has to do with appraising the uh, risk factors. We're talking about the economic risks because the Ukrainian banking system is not quite stable. Um, although we, we can see that different banks with international capital uh, are participating in the Ukrainian market. And also there are uh, legal uh, risks. Here we're talking about the uh, procedure whereby a foreign legal entity uh, has, uh, where, whereby uh, a foreign legal entity is, is trying to register with uh, Ukrainian tax authorities. Since I have um, used this procedure with several Ukrainian banks, I can tell you that when talking about the tax registration of a legal entity, it's quite formal in terms of its nature. The uh, the tax authorities are just registering the, uh, the official uh, address of uh, the foreign legal entity requiring corporate documentation to be submitted then the tax authority uh, is rather paying attention to the to to their notary confirmation uh, they're not scrutinizing those documents uh, and they, instead they consider all the executive uh, directors and all the other directors as well as uh, um, their jurisdiction, original jurisdiction. This then, uh, they fill out a special form um, and fill in the address of the, the foreign legal entity that wants to open up a bank account um, and within three business days we get a letter uh, which says that that the legal entity has been registered with the tax authority and this registration is different from that of Ukrainian residents it's a separate type of uh, registration of legal entities. Actually started as a practice, it started on, uh, accord according to the legislation uh, number 1117, allowing for residents to get registered to open up uh, a bank account. Mm -hmm. and, change their tax residency which is actually a very important opportunity because uh, foreign legal entities in ukraine can change their tax residency and avail uh, uh, all the opportunities um, following from becoming the uh, Ukrainian tax residents. Uh, they can, the legislation says that they can apply to change their tax residency from a, that of a foreign country to uh, the Ukrainian one. I can, I can provide you, an, uh, I can give you uh, an example. For example, uh, the, the, the kind of trend, the, 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 if 
if a Ukrainian legal entity is uh, receiving dividends, then they have to pay uh, taxes. The uh, re according to the five or fifteen percent tax rate, we're talking about the the uh, repatriation tax. If a foreign legal entity changes their uh, their tax residency over to the Ukrainian one, according to the Ukrainian legislation, the uh, according to the Ukrainian legislation, the dividends are going to become uh, tax payable uh, and. Uh, this tax resident is going to pay additional taxes off of the dividends uh, uh, as unlike the, uh, the uh, foreign legal entity that is a tax resident of a foreign country. So when talking about non-residents tax registration where uh, this is uh, the first step they have to be registered with a tax authority without uh, receiving the full-fledged status of a taxpayer and then they have to apply to to uh, a bank they have to fill out the uh, questionnaire of that client and submit the corporate entities a list of corporate entities documents indicating the the, the 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 place where they will be carrying out the the legal entity will be carrying out their economic activity and uh, we're talking about doing business if it is outside of ukraine then they have to submit the rental contract or any other contract or agreement to confirm that they are doing business in a certain at a certain location should we talk about uh, should we compare it the, the ukrainian bank's compliance procedure with that of other uh, foreign banks they do not uh, require the uh, confirm the documents confirming uh, the um, assets beneficiary if the legal entity is expecting to receive certain um, amounts of funds onto their bank account uh, in Ukraine uh, then uh, the Ukrainian bank does not require any document as to the beneficiary of those funds of course there are basic uh, there's basic information to be provided uh, and so on from my based on upon my own experience i can tell you that the new we have opened up accounts for many legal entities and we only it only took us uh, about under well a period of time which is uh, it took us a little less than a month to open up a bank account actually uh, the period of the period of time to submit all the documents only lasted for about two weeks it's very interesting to consider the option when there is no opportunity to submit the beneficiaries the confirmation of the, of the beneficiaries re revenues uh, ukrainian banks are quite tolerant uh, towards the exposed persons and also if uh, should there have been a negative publication about the customer or client 
um, by the media outlets, the Ukrainian banks do not consider this as a reason to refuse the claim, uh, as they are rather oriented to the final outcome and result. The next step uh, following the uh, account opening will have to do with with the transactions, account, the accounts are multi-currency ones always, including USD and Euros, and there are no limits to those uh, accounts. But uh, there, there is always a range of correspondent banks uh, connected to those accounts, and these correspondent banks um, initially were suspected to be able to limit the amount of funds transferred but we have not, so, not really seen that in in practice there is no uh, detailed um, uh, examination of all the uh, contracts uh, as the swiss and some other european banks are doing this when they just stop the uh, transaction and until the uh, price of the asset is further clarified the, uh, the, the so uh, from the standpoint of uh, the uh, bank's function as well as the commission fees uh, of the Ukrainian banks. Here we, we can clearly see uh, the um, advantageous comparison of price versus quality. The tariffs of these banks are lower than uh, those of a number of other payment systems. So, in the past year, the dynamics of opening up uh, non-resident bank accounts has been on the uprise. Uh, there are certain suspicions, of course. Uh, for example, uh, the year 2019 was quite modest in terms of uh, account opening activity because people were a little bit hesitant uh, due to the, the uh, because they did not exactly know what the tax authority uh, what, what the tax registration would exactly entail um, and when this issue was lifted and, and the new legislation began to be developed this issue was completely tackled by providing the definition that no residents starting uh, uh, 1st January 2021 can uh, be registered with tax uh, tax authorities uh, according to and open up bank accounts according to the legislation of Ukraine mm, since my time is almost up i i would propose to pause on to consider your questions uh, if, I, if i were to list um, my pres the main major points in terms of the uh, major thesis i would say it as follows now number one the uh, non-resident the non-residents in ukraine mm, regardless of uh, their national origin, uh, regardless of the national origin of the beneficiary and their registration, the country of registration, they can uh, be re rapidly, quickly registered with the tax authority and open up a bank account. Secondly, the tax registration of non-residents per se is providing uh, additional appealing advantages for example there is no exit tax in ukraine uh, any company from 
in a, uh, Anglo-Saxon Please. company can be registered uh, with uh, the tax authorities and uh, it can be deregistered with them and there's no exit tax application. Uh, we know that a number of countries are actually um, conducting this kind of a struggle. Uh, and thirdly, the legislation of Ukraine has uh, the, uh, Ukraine has a number of uh, ratification agreements, uh, whereby Ukrainian banks are made quite reliable reliable entities of uh, the Ukrainian market. Unfortunately, this this we cannot uh, think about their self-sufficiency uh, likewise uh, this is basically everything i wanted to to convey to you and i'm ready i stand ready to answer questions i can see some of the questions here yes natalia uh, let, let me try to answer some of the interesting questions here A question by Dmitry Mikhailenko, number one, has to do with political risks. When disclosing the beneficiaries, um, um, the registration and banks. Dmitry, it's a beautiful question. Dmitry himself understands that uh, the tax residency of the uh, beneficiary as a citizen of the Russian Federation doesn't rule out the uh, risk factor. Um, this is based upon my experience of interaction and cooperation with several banks. This is never a reason to refuse. Uh, in some cases, beneficiaries were publicly, publicly exposed persons. Uh, but even that did not serve as a reason to to uh, to refuse uh, the person. Actually, the, the procedure is starting uh, from the tax authority, uh, the tax registration. Um, you need to Done fill out you. a form provided by the bank, and then the bank can analyze this information to decide whether or not. Uh, there is any reason to um, to 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 politely refuse the person with uh, the opportunity to open up a bank account? I would not. Uh, I would not be one hundred percent sure that uh, Ukrainian banks will be neutral towards beneficiaries from all countries. I. I have, uh, there was a uh, there was a company that uh, did not have a clear beneficiary um, even the um, Ukrainian company did not was not allowed to open up a bank account in a with a Ukrainian bank. The second question has to do with uh, with tolerance. Yes, the registration procedure itself is quite simple. Uh, the first part of the question has to do with the uh, beneficiaries from the Russian Federation. Uh, given Ukraine has joined, uh, this would of course be given uh, proper consideration as well. Uh, uh, the tax residents of the, the US tax residents provide a separate category of entities. And in this particular case, we can. Uh, there's a question f uh, every bank has to answer as to whether, as to to um, whether or not the bank is interested in having such uh, a, a customer. In case if uh, uh, there is 
in, in case if information on beneficiaries has to be disclosed. We opened up uh, bank accounts for KLTD from uh, the UK and another account for another foreign company. You know that we are living uh, during the uh, period of transparency. We disclose beneficiaries in and given the corporate structure that my clients are working uh, with, uh, they are able to provide the quality information, including all the shell companies and links uh, all the way to the final beneficiaries. And uh, in this context, we, we submitted the trust agreement, which was sufficient to disclose the, the ultimate beneficiary. We actually um, translated it and had it notarized the translation and that was enough. Natalia, I, I bring my apologies. We are slightly behind lagging behind our schedule. So uh, I have a lot of interesting questions, which I would uh, like you to answer by saying the uh, people that posed these questions in my view the most interesting question has to do with economic substance uh, does uh, does ukraine require uh, the economic substance to cooperate with a ukrainian bank? our banks uh, require the rental contract or agreement uh, providing the address uh, of companies' operations, or in two in two cases, we had uh, a company provide the license agreement. Although we cannot say that this was a 100% economic substance, because we did not disclose the entire information about uh, all the beneficiaries but we did provide the the um, rental contract and we also were required to submit some sort of an a ukrainian address uh, and the, the department of uh, currency reg regulation actually requested for us to provide the uh, the document confirming the address the registration the registered the the the, uh, the, the registered address in the country of registration does do Ukrainian banks accept such structures with nominal uh, founders? From my uh, ex based upon my experience, I can say that the Ukrainian banks are not do, do, do not really they're not really very much aware of what a nominal or non-nominal structure means so the beneficiary has to sign up a form or a questionnaire and of course uh, the beneficiary has to provide uh, uh, a certain range a certain volume of information and uh, ukrainian banks do not they do not require for um, legal entities to fill out dozens of uh, questionnaires, but only one questionnaire accentuating and emphasizing the types of revenues the corporate, uh, the, the legal ent entity will uh, get. As for the corporate structure, uh, uh, the bank is, uh, is requiring for the final beneficiary to be indicated if there is no indication of the final um, 
beneficiary, of course, uh, the bank is going to ask questions about the document. Uh, the, will will request uh, will require the trust agreement that regulates supposedly regulates relations the relations between the nominal beneficiary and uh, between the nominal beneficiary and the final beneficiary if the nominal beneficiary is a, le a legal entity will the ukrainian bank require a document uh, no we only require the incumbent certificate from the company that nominal represented a uh, different uh, legal entity thank you very much